Hello Fumi Nation, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are stopping by for the very first time, my name is Fumi De Saluvold and welcome to a fresh new episode of Sister to Sister. Over the weekend, I had sent out a poll because a lot of you have said, Fumi, we want Sister to Sister. We want to be spiritually and emotionally uplifted and we need clarification. You are our auntie <laughs> and we need guidance. I said, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. And it occurred to me that as they're asking for sister to sister, ask them, what is it exactly you want me to talk about? You sent out all kinds of requests and the highest of them all, which I will put up for you so you guys can see, was this one. And it says, hello, Auntie Fumi. Hi, honey. <laughs> Hi, baby. <laughs> Fumi, please, can you talk about how to maintain a relationship with a man, but you have chosen not to sleep with him until the day you get married? Thank you, Auntie Fumi. 87% of you said, we want to know. 13 of you said, no, <laughs> we'll write it out. <laughs> and that's okay. So let me start by telling you this. Um, I can only go by my humble experience and what I truly believe will work for you guys. I got married at 40. Prior to meeting my wonderful, gorgeous, sexy, fabulous husband, I had engaged in sexual relationships that went south, that did not go anywhere. By the time I had met Ula, my priorities had changed. I was more seasoned in who I was, so much more confident than the 20 year old girl. Let us give 20 years of dating. And so my priorities were, what family did he come from? What family did he want? What kind of family member would he become in our new family? What were his principles, his ethics? What were his goals? I needed to know if those goals, ethics, principles aligned with my goals, principles, hopes, wishes, determination. I was not looking for a rich man. I was looking to find my life partner. We as women are wonderful. We are so beautiful. We are flowers. And the greatest power and gift we have is to nurture. And that is why we give birth. That is why our sex has been chosen to do that particular duty. We are also extremely emotional, or might I add, I am very emotional. And so I tie sexual activity entwined around my emotional compass. Translation, I sleep with you, oh my God, everything, yes, daddy. <laughs> Reasoning goes out the window. I need to be clear-headed to know what I'm doing. And so when I met Ola, it was extremely important for me to know that he was interested in me. It was secondary that I liked him. Because you can like a whole bunch of people, but is it reciprocated? Is it respected? And that's the catcher in the rye. For you to say, I'm not going to sleep with him till our marriage, you can sleep with him and the marriage can still fail. It is a very old myth to say, I will not sleep with my husband until we get married, even though that was the case with myself and Ola. We did not sleep together until our wedding night. Might I also add that Ola proposed to me one week of meeting me. We were married after two months of the proposal. So it was very short, but we were older. I wanted to know what his earning capacity was. He wanted to know mine because we were planning to build a future together. 13 years after the fact, with baby Paduski, we're not doing pretty bad because the marriage is a journey. I promise unto you, I promise unto you. That's the easy part, the celebration, the white dress, walking down the aisle, wearing the suits. That is not the challenge. The challenge is the marriage. The marriage is the journey. And it will come with different challenges along the way in the marriage where each one of you will have to step up, have to be the stronger one, have to be the more patient one, have to be the more understanding one. And there is no room for ego. There's no room for arrogance. 
there's no room for bullying because it will not sustain. So you abstaining until marriage doesn't mean anything. The work is in finding out who you're marrying. You see, I tell you, guys are very simple. Men are very simple creatures. They are wonderful. Aren't they handsome? Mm. <laughs> the beautiful thing about being happily married is that I can see them as they are. And I can appreciate their beauty. Men are beautiful. They are handsome, but they are beautiful. And there's a simplicity. Oh, I forgot to tell you, this is just a flu jab. <laughs> you be like, for me, which one is this one? <laughs> which one is this? It's a flu jab. I love England. I love living in the UK. I miss the US. But I tell you this, the United Kingdom, their health care system is fantastic. Fantastic. I lived in America 20 years and I've lived actually in England 20 years off and on. I went to university here and uh, as I've gotten older, especially when I was uh, preparing to have Adrian, that was when I really saw the difference in the healthcare system within the UK and the US and the UK you cannot compare. As a matter of fact, when Obama was the president and he came over with Michelle, that was when he really saw what the UK had in relation to healthcare. And he went back to the U.S., tried to create the Obamacare that was very similar to what the uh, healthcare system is here. I'm 50. I'm in my 50s. I have to say that. I can't even say I'm 50. I'm in my 50s because I'm 52, going to be 53. And so they're like, oh, if you're over 50, come and get your flu jab. Free. Just walk in. Get it. Boom. Have COVID tests. It's in boots. Walk in. They give it to you free. Adrian, free everything free. They treated me like a goddess when I was having Adrian because I was high risk because I was older. And they treated me in such a way that I know I wouldn't have gotten without a million dollars in my pocket in the US. It is what it is. Okay, I digress. Let's go back. So, men are wonderful. They are wonderful creatures. They are very, very simple. They are hunters. They just hunt. They hunt. And for them, they look at skin, they look at hair, because they look at the reproductive properties in us as females. That's just fact. Bring your brother, your father, your son, let them sit beside with your husband, and you can play this for them, and you can ask them, is she talking a lot of nonsense, or is there some truth in this? Hear what they have to say. They're hunters. They are very, very simple. They know what they want to eat. They, want, they know what they want to watch. They know what they want to wear. It's all simple. They want to have fun. And if the lights are low, the moment is right, and there's a woman in front of them, they don't even see the face. They'll sleep with her. Why not? It's all the same in the dark. That's how they think. Now, I say this because that is why it's good for you to abstain. Because you're not getting the attention by the sexual activity. You're getting the attention by being elusive. By not being there. By having ghost qualities. You're here, you're gone. All that is left is the fragrance in the air. When did she come? What did she wear? Who did she speak to? She's gone. That is how you get their attention. That is how they look around and they're like, is that Cherie? <laughs> because they're simple creatures. You have to get their attention by truly not being there and giving them what they want every single time. You do that, you're in trouble. You're creating a little munchkin monster. Yeah. What do you mean by that, Fooms? I mean that in you sleeping with him does not necessarily mean that he's like, oh, I've had her. In you sleeping with him, getting up in the morning and you're out the door, that will get his attention because he'll be like, um, I thought we'd have breakfast. Oh, no, I'm busy. He calls you, you don't pick up the phone. Are you playing games? No, you're not playing games. You're trying to see whether he's interested because it's only the hungry lion that goes out to hunt. Now he's hunting, but there are many of us that he can hunt. But he wants you in particular because you're not giving him the attention that he wants, that he thought he had. And in so doing, he gets to know you. And he's like, you know what? Cherie's not that bad after all. She's got a brother. She's got a sister. She went to uni. She loves the color red. When he's in the supermarket, oh, I know Cherie loves peaches because he's taking the time to get to know her because she's not that available all the time. The availability. 
If you abstain until your marriage, what's your plan B? What's your plan B? Okay, you're married now, so what's the plan? Did you take time to know him, to know his weak points? Not necessarily his good, his weak, because you need to know whether you can live with those characters, because we all have them. Nobody is perfect, but you find that person that is perfect for you. For Ula and I, we chose not to because we were going to get married soon enough. I was 39, he was 44. When we met, it was March. My birthday was the following month, April. We got married 7th of July and his birthday is in June. So I had just turned 40, he had just turned 45. And of course, you know, we wanted it to be special. We were so very untraditional. We married so, 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 so quickly. And uh, we wanted to keep certain things special, almost to save. Like when you go out for dinner, you want to have that lovely uh, dessert and you save it for later because you really want to enjoy it. Because love making is the most beautiful thing. It's the most beautiful thing. It is that language between you and him. Nobody else has that language like the two of you together. You might have a language with somebody else that's different, but nothing will be the same. That's that connect. That's that I'm here, I'm present, I'm with you, I'm your girl, I'm your chick, I'm your woman, you're my man, you're my lover, you're my daddy, I'm here, you're here, this is us. Outside of everything, this is me and you. We love Adrian, but Ula, Fumi, this is us. This right here is us. That's that love-making power. That's where he touches you, you touch him back, and you say, we're good. And it's very special, and it should be extremely, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Cherished. And it shouldn't be abused by him or by you. Your intentions have to be sincere. And in so doing, you need to take time. You need to take time in all things. And again, I know this for a lot of girls, you sleep with him, you turn to jelly. All of a sudden, oh, I want to move in with him. I'm calling him every day. I want to know all of his friends. I'm talking to his mama. That's a bit much. You have now taken off his sneakers. Translation, he was the hunter. Now he's not interested because every time he turns, you're there. Because you've gotten emotionally entangled, entwined. Whereas you should be emotionally entangled and entwined in your career, in your fitness journey, in getting your health insurance together, life insurance together, property insurance together, your education, seeing your other friends, going to go and see your families. Because the old myth again is he should do everything. Don't get it twisted. I always joke. Every time I'm spending Ola's money, don't get it twisted. Do not think I don't make my own money. And do not think it does not go into the pot. We are a team. We work and thrive towards the same goal. In so doing, whoever has the stamina keeps going for the family. There is nothing that Ula earns or I earn that does not go into the family pot. And the priority number one is Adrian. And then from there, we pay out all of the bills that need to be paid. We put into savings. Have to. You've got a kid. Anything can happen. And so to hold on to, you know, that sexual gate padlock has to be for a reason. You want to be clear headed to know what you're doing and you don't want to be emotionally entangled. Don't sleep with him because you know what? It weakens you. It strengthens him. You need to know that he loves you. You need to know that he cares for you. There's an old saying, and I've said it before, let him love you more than you love him because through the marriage and the relationship, you will get to love him even more. Every day, it's the little things. And that is what is truly and sincerely important. You should know why you want to abstain for this so that you can focus on that. And the biggest picture of it all is to get yourself away from being glazed-eyed and you see him clearly. Is this the man you even want to marry? Because the lovemaking can be good. Sex is fabulous. Sex sells. 
sexy, show the skin, look hot, this, that, or whatever. It's fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. But do you think that's what sustains a 50-year marriage? No. Mm -mm. Not at all. You could look back and say, remember the good times, and you still have them. What sustains the marriage is love, respect, admiration, consideration, empathy, patience, humility, because you are going to be called up. Trust me when I tell you, time and time again, under those qualities. It's not sexual. Sexual is pleasure. That is dinner and dance and going out and having fun. And it will begin to please itself right over here but it cannot be a priority in the face of children, family, and all of that. No, it's extremely important, but it doesn't set precedence and the weight of marriage. I've been married 13 years. Trust me, I know. Do we get our cookies? Hell yes. <laughs> but it's not the priority. In the family unit, it's not the priority on a daily basis. There are other things that take precedence. So, for me, do you want to abstain for sex until marriage and you are engaged? No, no, go right ahead. You know, twinkle those toes. Why not? Are you dating? And you've been dating for a while? Again, it really depends on your self-control. Are you glazed because you've slept with him? Now you think that he's the best thing since pockets on jeans. You have to be clear-headed so that you know what you're doing. Before I go, let me tell you a little story. I had decided to abstain from sex in my 30s. I think I was 30, 31, 32. I just said, no, I'm just not doing it because I was too glazed eyes and I was getting into trouble and heartbroken left and right. And I was choosing the wrong men. I was in California and I was dating this guy. He was okay, you know. And um, he was becoming comfortable. Yeah, he was becoming comfortable and I peeped it. And it came to a certain head where, no pun intended, he would come to visit me and he would have eaten before he came to visit. And when I say visit me, he would come to my place. And I would have cleaned up, I would have snacks, food, smoothies, or whatever, and I was poor. <laughs> I was doing background. Background in those days, I think it was 60 pounds, 50 pounds, 50 dollars, I beg your pardon, 50 dollars for eight hours. So you can imagine how much money I had, and I was paying the bills and everything. And um, he had said, for me, I'll come and see you a particular weekend, and he didn't show up. When I called him, he had said, oh, for me, I am so sorry. I left my phone at home. I was talking to my sister in the office. Time went by and I just forgot. I'm so sorry I left my phone at home. Now, I, hadn't, I didn't sleep with him, yeah? So I was very clear-headed. So I said to myself, for me, this is nonsense. He forgot his phone at home. It doesn't matter. He should know my phone number by heart and should have called me from the office to say, Fumi, I'm running late. Can I still come? Or can I make it up to you and I'll take you out the following day? You see, when you are clear-headed, it all comes together. Had I slept with him, I'd be like, oh my God, I completely understand. Okay, not a problem. When can I see you again? Should I come over? You run out, take the little money that you got, take a taxi, run over to his house. It's Sunday night. You're supposed to be sleeping, rested, because you've got a long filming week at Ugly Betty. But instead, I said to myself, and I do this a lot, I look in the mirror. <laughs> For me, what's happening? <laughs> For me, what's happening? What's happening? Be real. You were left out here in the cold. And I look at myself, and you're fabulous. You're beautiful. You're not going to take this. And I said, no, I'm not. So I set a plan. Didn't say a word. And he's going to know this. <laughs> and I don't care. 
About two weeks later, I was busy. First and foremost, I was busy. He kept on calling and I said, I'm busy, you know, I'll see you later or whatever. And I was cooking up a plan because I wanted to teach him a lesson. But I wanted to give him the exact antidote that he had given me. Because you see, at the end of the day, antibiotic is what? It is the antidote of the poison that's trying to kill you. Isn't it? All right. So about two, three weeks later, oh, Fumi, I miss you. Come on, let's go out. You understand? Let's go to the beach. It was always cheap dates, you know, never to a restaurant, <laughs> to the beach, to a drive through And I said, guess what? He said, what? I said, I've been invited to go to an award show because we were invited to a lot of award shows and we were allowed to bring a plus one. So I said, do you want to be my plus one? He said, huh, because he was always in awe in what I did as an, as an actor, you know, as a body double, as a stunt double, all of that. So I said, yes, he said, oh my God. And I made sure it was a weekday. I have to ask my boss so I can take the day off. I said, yes, of course, take the day off. Come to my place, we'll go together. I'll get you in, blah, blah, blah. And of course, we even have a gifting suite. So you can get all of this M box, this box, these games or whatever. His eyes literally jumped out of his head. He now called me and said for me, I'm shopping, I don't have that much money, but what do you think, should I get these jeans? In those days, true religion jeans were fire. And I said, yes, darling. He said, what do you think, should I keep the tag on and return it? I said, you know what, darling, keep them because you'll be coming to more events with me, so you need to have you like your look and everything. Even get the shoes, get the shoes, the shirt, the jeans, everything. He was like, oh, it's about $700. I said, what $700? The gifting suite's about two thousand. Yes, 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 yes. I will get it. I get it. I get it. He got all of that. The boss told him he'll take, he'll get the day off, but he won't get paid for the day. At this point, I was kind of sort of feeling bad. I was like, "Fool me, you know, you don't have to kill him." And I was like, "Well, let me think about it." I didn't have to think about it too long because as he was driving to my place, he called me to say, oh, for me, I'm going to stop and have lunch before I come and pick you up. He's going to buy himself lunch. Didn't ask me, for me, would you like some lunch? Should I not get you something in lieu of the fact that he was coming with me as a guest to this fabulous award show that in true form he would have gotten over $2,500 in gifts because they have gifting sweets. It didn't occur to him to even get me something for lunch. You know when you press your foot on the accelerator in the car? I said, you know what? No change in the plan. Accelerate forward. I said, wonderful, darling. When will you be here? He said he will be there at around 6.30. I said, wonderful. At five, I was out of the house. And guess what? I had my phone with me on silent. It was with me, vibrating, and it was on silent. I went out and I had a fabulous time. By 6.33, all the way Till 6.30 in the morning, I can comfortably say that he must have called me about 50 times with one message more desperate than the other. But the one message that I loved the most was two days after when he had had time to reflect. And he said to me, left a message and said, for me, I've been thinking and I want to apologize if I have seemed selfish. <laughs> In any way, shape, or form. When I look back and I was buying food on my way to your place, I should have bought you something too. When Ula and I got married, he sent me a card to say congratulations and that for me, I never ever got over you. That's because I was clear-headed and because I did not engage in any sexual activity with him, I could actually see him for the selfish person that he was and could have been worse. He wasn't perfect for me. I wish him well, but he wasn't perfect for me. So I hope you enjoyed this sister to sister. <laughs> Leave all of your comments below. Leave all of your questions below. Make sure to like, to subscribe, share, and hit that notification button. Ah, 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 ah. 
before I leave, I wanted to say a huge thank you to Nubian Skin. Nubian Skin, I love you. Nubian Skin is black owned. And I did not know that at the time. And you see the backless bra hack. It has hit almost a million views. I cannot believe it. And it was their bra that I had used in creating the bra hack because the straps were sensational and fantastic. I wanted to say a huge thank you to a lot of you. Yes, I have patterned it. We are going through a lot of legalities here in England. It's a lot of money. Oh my God. But um, I wanted to say thank you to Nubian Skin for the lingerie and for the gifts that they sent me. And they sent me a card and I will put a picture up. Dear for me, thank you for sharing the world's most incredible bra hack. Lots of love, Ade. <laughs> thank you, Ade. And here she gave me some wonderful new pieces from their collection. Do not forget to follow me on Insta stories. Don't forget to follow me on YouTube stories and YouTube posts. And I will post everything that they sent me over there. I just wanted to share this and wanted to share with you guys Nubian skin, a different kind of nude. And their flesh tones are fantastic. Let me just bring out their underwear here, which I love. And it is fabulous for those beautiful body hugging dresses. Just look. Is this not beautiful? Look at the shade of it as well. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very much, Nubian Skin. Thank you, my darlings. Let me know if you want to have more sister to sisters like this. I've said it a million times and I'll say it again. It is my channel, but it's your show. And I have of this year have finally understood why and how this channel has grown because I listen to you. Because you are first priority. Bye-bye. <laughs>